One of the reasons that the Steelers are getting in is because the Colts blew their opportunity to punch a ticket to the postseason. Oh. Good God. I, uh, Rich Eisen had a funny tweet. He said uh, two weeks ago the Colts were the team nobody wanted to face in the playoffs, and now the Colts are the team that nobody will face in the playoffs. I, very simple. This is my analytics for the day, Mike. If you can't beat the Jaguars with a playoff spot in the line, you don't belong in the playoffs. It's that simple. They lose 26 to 11. It felt worse than that. It was 26 to 3 until late in the game. And the Colts just never showed up. Darius Leonard had said that they were kind of lackadaisical the week before the Raiders game that they lost at home, but we had a better practice week this week. Well, you need to have a. You, you, wasn't good enough. Uh, unbelievable. And kudos to the Jaguars for getting it together. And, uh, you know, when it would have been very easy for guys to make business decisions and tap out and it had just given up 50 to the Patriots. Unbelievable that the Jaguars did what they did and inexcusable for the Colts to blow that game. So first, let me give props to Jacksonville. And Shaquille Griffin, I thought, had the, the line that I try to express all the time. He said, listen, we don't know what's going to happen with the coaching staff and we don't know what's going to happen with some of the players on this team. But he said, this is one more chance to put your resume on tape, to show coaches, whether it's on this team or around the league, what you can do. And he's exactly right. That's your resume. Your resume is the eye in the sky and how you play. And I love that line. This was one more chance. And they stepped up and they smacked the Colts right in the mouth. So kudos to you, Jacksonville. You not only get the win, you still get the number one pick in the draft. So, you know, Hutchinson or Thibodeau, you know, either pass rushing D end, you know, you'll, you'll have your chance in Jacksonville because that's probably going to be the pick. And then how about on the other side of it? The Colts trade for Carson Wentz, give the Eagles a first-round pick. Wentz ends up throwing, what, in the last eight games, over 200 yards just twice. So the, the Philadelphia Eagles get a first-round pick, and they're in the playoffs with Jalen Hurts. I mean, it is horrific. I had a chance to talk to Frank Reich this week in a, in a podcast I was doing a few days ago. And we, we asked, we were talking about Carson Wentz, and he said, listen, we have what I think should be the MVP in Jonathan Taylor, the leading rusher of the league, and again, we know about his season. But he said, there are going to be times when we need to count on Carson Wentz, and he's going to have to come through. And he didn't, right? He didn't. I mean, he had his chances, as I said. Now, when I say the last eight games, only twice he was over 200 yards, some of those games, they didn't need it because Jonathan Taylor is running well. So that can be a misleading stat. But... When they need him to make plays, he was not doing it at a rate good enough for this team to get into the playoffs. So, I mean, I, I am stunned. Stunned. They had two shots. One was against the playoff team, now that we know what was the Raiders. But this one was against a two-win team. And to, to feel that you weren't ready or you weren't there or you were lackadaisical, man, those players, I, I know, are, and I know they're going to say, listen, those guys in Jacksonville, they get paid. They're professional athletes. I get it. But, man, that's embarrassing. You had two shots. You had two shots. And, and you didn't, couldn't take care of them, even with a two-win team. It's embarrassing. And, you know, Carson Wentz got what he wanted. He, he wanted a fresh start. He wanted a place where he could go take over. And like you said, Mike, there are occasions where the quarterback has to step up and get it done, and he didn't get it done yesterday. And I, we're, we're going to talk later in the show about what will, won't, may, could happen by way of coaching changes. But one, one of the things I, I, I love about the NFL, and, and I say I love it because it, it adds to the intrigue and the drama and the unpredictability. You've got multi-billion dollar organizations whose business is to put on football games and to try to win football games. And those organizations aren't publicly owned like every other multi-billion dollar organization in the country, basically, that's, you know, corporation with a board of directors and all that, and everything is very reasoned, except the Packers. You've got a monarchy system for these various teams where the team gets handed down from generation to generation. And does anybody really know how Jim Ursay is going to react to what happened yesterday after he sleeps on it for a day or two or three? I, I can't rule out Jim Ursay deciding this is completely and totally inexcusable and it's embarrassing and I'm getting rid of everybody. I'm getting rid of Frank Reich. I'm getting rid of Chris Ballard. We don't know what Jim Ursay is going to do. And we didn't expect him to be in this spot. We expected the Vikings. We expected the Bears. We expected some of these other teams to be in this spot. So we've had had the opportunity to think about it and talk about it and process it as had their owners. 
Jim Irsay never expected to be in this spot, Mike. So he's waking up this morning in Indianapolis, and he's going to roll out of bed, and who knows what he's going to do once he puts his robe and slippers on and goes and has a cup of coffee because he's got the ultimate power over this team. He's the king. And if he decides what happened yesterday is embarrassing and inexcusable and we can do better, I don't know what he's going to do. And, and so, you know, I've been watching all the different hot spots and where could changes be made. Because of the way these businesses are managed and run and owned, you have to at least be wondering what is Jim Irsay going to do because he has all the power to make a decision like that and say what happened yesterday, I, 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 th- that, that, there's got to be accountability. And I can't fire myself, so I'm going to go fire some other people instead. Well, listen, when, when, what you said at the end there, he has the ability to make the decision like that. That's what you don't want to do, right? You don't want to make the decision snapping your fingers and saying like that. There's got to be a thought process behind it for any team if you're not happy maybe with your quarterback or other positions. Listen, I thought Frank Wright and Chris Ballard had done a nice job of acquiring talent. We all thought this was a playoff team the way they were playing, but they didn't get there. So where, where do you look? Listen, we can put some blame on Carson Wentz, but a lot of time, and we know the saying, too much blame goes on the quarterback. They get too much glo- glory and too much blame. But – I just hear those words of Frank Reich in my head. At times, Carson's going to have to step up for us. And unfortunately, he didn't did, didn't do it. But again, so what's your thought process on coach, GM, quarterback? It's always going to be, well, what's the alternative? You know, as I said earlier about the, the, the Raiders, you know, do you make that decision and say, okay, we're changing everything. Now new head coach, new GM, new system, offensively and defensively. All the players are changing again. Do we want to go through that? If we want a new quarterback, who's the quarterback out there? If we're getting rid of this guy, I don't want this guy anymore. Okay, well, what's your answer? Who are you going to get? You know, because you have built a team that's in a win-now mode. And you didn't this year, and it was embarrassing. I get it. But you still have the talent to do it now. You have basically one of the top two, if Derrick Henry's healthy, two of the best backs, you know, in the league in Jonathan Taylor. You have a hell of an offensive line. Oh, by the way, did not, did not pass protect very well yesterday at all. So there's a lot of accountability to go, to go on. But I think they have a lot of the right pieces there. So I don't know what the answer is going to be, but I hope Jim Irsay doesn't snap his fingers and make some snap decision that you make all these changes and then all of a sudden you're kind of looking around going, okay, now we have to kind of start over again. October 12, 2021, tweeted at 6.17 p.m. by Jim Ursay. Colts Nation, don't you worry. We're going to get the horseshoe at least two Lombardies this decade. As sure as the sun rises and the seasons change, it's coming. Don't ever doubt that, ever. You will see greatness. Believe and you will see. We didn't see greatness yesterday. And, and again, Mike, he shouldn't do it. No. But it's fascinating that one person has the power if he so chooses to utilize it, to say, hey, Frank Reich, you came and sat in my office last year and you talked for 45 minutes about what a great decision it would be for us to bring Carson Wentz to town, and it wasn't. And it was your call. I I listened to you. Chris Ballard was saying maybe we shouldn't do it. I listened to you. I I can't – this can't can't continue. Who who knows? I'd love to know who at the end of the day was the champion for Carson Wentz because it's a pass-fail business. There are no grades. It's pass or it's fail. And when you have an owner who's set the bar as multiple Super Bowl wins this decade, that, that, that it's, accountability may come when it shouldn't. And I'm just I'm going to keep an eye on it because it's got to be a tough morning. For as hard as it is for fans to process the abrupt end of a season that had plenty of promise, it's even tougher for the people who hold the pink slip in the franchise. So uh, I'm just uh, all I'm saying is I'm going to be paying attention to what happens in Indianapolis in the coming days because you have one guy who has high expectations who's got to be feeling very upset and deflated about what's happened this season. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.